Well, you meet so many twats. <laughs> he used to do, he used to record all these bands, you know, and they were all garage bands, so they were posh kids in a lot of money and, you know, fathers that bought them proper equipment and they, they'd come and, like, record and they'd be useless, you know. They'd come and record and then they'd come into a control room and you'd play it back and they'd go, hmm, my stronger. Sort of like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, this kid says to me once, he said, I was like, oh, 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 and he said, hmm, can you make it sound good? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I said, well, no. <laughs> <laughs>
did this great thing in Britain, you know. <laughs> you were, we joined the common market and we were all together and and then all these people said, we don't need those bureaucrats in Brussels telling us what to do. And there was this kind of, there's a new breed of politician, which in England I call man in a pub. I'm like, a, you know what, Roy? You talk more sense in the last 10 minutes than those politicians in Whitehall have done in the last 10 years. <laughs> Roy goes, yeah. Yeah, and uh, over here you call it Donald Trump. <laughs> um, you know, uh, yeah, you know, some twat, and everyone goes, hey, he looks just like me. He's about as intelligent as me. I'm going to vote for him. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't laugh, really. <laughs> but so we we left the European Union. You know, we had Brexit. And of course, you had to trump Brexit with your, your yeah. I know. <laughs> you couldn't let us have our moment, could you? <laughs> uh, you know, the biggest fuck up in the whole universe of politics and all the rest of it. But um. Yeah, uh, it's all a bit messed up now, like no one's got any gas, no one's got any fuel, no one's got any electricity, food is short, it's a complete mess. And that's, that's, that's the UK, you know, post-Brexit, but I can sort of understand it because like, I used to live when, 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 when the European Union became a thing or the common market, it was like 1973 or something, and I lived in a town in the northeast of England called Hull, where I was an art student, I used to play in bands, and um, Hull was a fishing port, it was a really hard, grim place, the weather was atrocious, it had this fishing industry, and the place was full of short belligerent men who'd headbutt you, you know, for fun. <laughs> and um, and and then they they built a bridge over the Humber estuary. It's the biggest estuary in Europe, and it's just this muddy river estuary with cargo ships going up and down. And they built this fucking great suspension bridge across it. And on the back of building the suspension bridge, they called it Hull, Gateway to Europe. <laughs> Which I never understood because Europe was over there and the bridge went down there <laughs> to a place called Lincolnshire where they grow Brussels sprouts, <laughs> cabbages, peas, Stuff like that, you know, I mean, they do it very well, I'm sure, but I mean, it's not exactly the fucking dynamic stuff of Europe and new beginnings and brave new world and all the rest of it, is it, you know? It's just fucking agriculture, so, I mean, very good, but, uh, I know one fucking likes Lincolnshire, it's a horrible place, it's flat and the people are horrible, they're kind of mean and flat, and they look a bit like... They've all got this complexion that's like the the interior of a of a Lincolnshire pork sausage, <laughs> which is another thing they're famous for. They do sausages. They're very good at sausages. <laughs> let's let's just make that plain now. I'm not maligning the Lincolnshire Lincolnshireans. They are good at sausages, <laughs> and they look like them. <laughs> but, what? Yeah, I know, I know. I mean, I know people are living on Lincolnshire pork sausages. And there's a lot of things. You can have them with custard or cream, or you can have them plain, or you can have them with butter and milk. They're delicious, I'm sure. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know where this... I don't know, this is the worst song introduction I've ever done in my life. You know, I mean, like, I used to be one of those slick artists that you could put on in the Royal Festival Hall, but I'm not anymore. I'm, yeah. Right. I'm 
I better get started really, else we'll be here all fucking night. A crooked pub propped at the corner of the street. Opposite a furniture shop called Everything But The Girl. Rocket shaped signs declared space made. A brother of a brother in law tore all the houses down. Move the people to the outskirts. To places where the buses run, but no one knows why where they are. I just sold my bass guitar. I ran down Springbank in the rain.
Ash. Thank you. I hope this is going all right for you. Now, hold on. I think I'll get undressed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, time was. Um, oh, yes. Well, you say that, but you just don't know, do you? <laughs> in a record store. It's just great, you know, I think. Oh, they're, they're nice people, you know, I hope you, I hope you buy lots of records here. Yeah. And did you know that Amy is the championship of pinball playing for women. Now, I, I mean, apparently about 147 in line for the overall championship because there are a lot of men that play pinball, you know, in between whatever it is that men do. Um, <laughs> Uh, very good pinball players and you can imagine you know and I expect she's had it mansplained to her to the nth degree this is how you actually do it <laughs> so uh, I, I've invented this scenario now where like because I, I, I read crime fiction I mean you know really bad crime fiction sometimes <laughs> I'm sorry, you know, I mean, like, uh, John Paul Sartre and stuff like that rest of the time, but crime fiction quite a lot of the time. And I'm just thinking that there could be a crime fiction thing where there are, there's someone who's murdering male pinball <laughs> champions all over the world. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to start tomorrow. <laughs> And we'd appreciate your help in this. So if you feel like murdering someone, please murder a pinball player, a male one. Are there any male pinball players in the room tonight? Get him! <laughs> well, that would have been slick. You know, I could have gone into the next tune, but I think my guitar might be completely out of tune. But... did all that COVID business, you know, I got COVID and I nearly died. It was quite remarkable, really. One minute I was fit and healthy and like, you know, going running and stuff. And then suddenly I couldn't walk around the block and then I had a heart attack and it seems I nearly died of it. And I thought, well, I'm going to dedicate myself to get a really good live set together. I didn't, I just realised I'd forgotten how to play all the tunes. So I had to relearn them all. And when I finished relearning them all, I thought, isn't this all I've done? I forgot my life's work, relearned it all. But I did find out that if you get a sweet water sticker and make two snips in it, you can make it into a sticker that says twat. <laughs> So, so I did that, you know, and I'm passing that on. I didn't write any sonnets, I didn't put tunes up on Bandcamp the whole fucking time. Didn't do any of that good stuff that people who are a pain in the ass do during pandemics. This is, um, this tune is jolly and it's jaunty. And it's joyless. <laughs> but it is like a folk song, you know, and if I was a clog dancer, I would clog dance to it. 
but I have neither clogs nor the ability to clog down, so I think we're spared that. Okay, um, could have been hitting folk clubs everywhere. <laughs> Thank you. 
well, at least I tried. This is going okay, you know. Yeah. I'm really interested in this anti-vax business. 
There's a great, there's a great notice that's in the back that apparently used to be on the door that says, um, there's 50% off Eric Clapton records. Um, but you have to present a vaccine certificate to get one. If that's okay. I got in trouble because I banned him from all my shows. As you can see, he's not here tonight. No good looking around. With your 50% off records, you know, looking for an autograph because he's not here. And if he walks through that door, armed security men will frog march him out. Do you, do you know he lives here? He does. Oh dear. Oh dear. That's, I hope you don't know where I'm staying. <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, I don't think it makes a fucking bit of difference to him personally, but um, Ian Hunter, the famed rock and roll mop the hooper Ian Hunter, his, his daughter, who is a well-known British nut job, um, oh dear. she said I was a fucking disgrace and I should not be in a creative industry, and I, I didn't know I was in an industry, but... Um, <clears throat> Yeah, anyway, um, because of that, I don't know, but um, of course she, she lives in a world where Eric Clapton might turn up. It'd be hilarious if you walked in. <laughs> he don't still live here, does he? Uh, we don't think so. What the fuck's he doing living here? The weather's like fucking horrible. Yeah, we you know, he could live somewhere with nice weather. You know, these people have got no bloody imagination. I mean, the rest of us, you know, I mean, I don't know, he's not looking for some funky downtown place with concrete peeling walls or anything, is he? I can't, I don't get it. But anyway, anyway. I don't, I really don't get any of it, because, like, where we live, I live in New York State, upstate New York, and it's the lowest vaccine um, place. I mean, with the highest COVID incidence, outside of New York City and the whole of the state of New York. It's the poorest county. Um, something that I'm probably not doing anything to help get better. Um, I like to be part of something. Um, so, you see people, they come into the local supermarket and like they're kind of big and lardy and manly and uh, they don't wear masks and they walk around and they look at you like, you know, you must at least be homosexual or Jewish if you do wear a mask, because that's the kind of people, you know, like that. And, and, and like, you know, they, but then they fill these shopping carts up with white processed bread and, and tins of soup and tins of shit and packets of shit and fucking lardy stuff and they never actually read the ingredients on it, you know, and I think, well, that's a fucking heart attack waiting to happen, that's a stroke, that's diabetes coming right up at you. And they will get all of these things, but then they will go to the doctor and the doctor will give them the medication to treat or to manage, as they say, they don't cure any problems, they manage them, I notice. This is the thing that's crept in. Um, so they will get them the condition managed, and they will not think about the side effects of any of the medication that they're taking, and when the medication fucks something else up and the liver gets fucked up, the kidneys get fucked up, they'll take more and more medication to control that. But when you say, look, um, there's a deadly virus going around, and um, there's a real cool thing, you get this vaccine, it's free, and you get a second one for free, so it's a two-for-one free job. They go, I'm not fucking taking that. There's no way, I don't know what's in it. Which is it's literally what those people are doing. I don't, I don't understand it, but anyway, I mean... So, I don't know. I mean, I've got friends in England who are anti-vaxxers, and I don't know what to tell them. I don't know, they just believe stuff, but I don't think there's much choice in this, because this is all we've fucking got. 
we've got a vaccine, we haven't got anything else, um, we haven't got polio, though I'm told that's totally different. It's a different affliction, but you know, it, it required a vaccine. But people were a bit more fucking team-minded then. Now we're just all together weird. I mean, if this is the end of the human race, it's probably a good thing in the end. Darkness at the edge of the daylight A clusterfuck galaxy Fucking up in front of the sun
chapters and then I, I want to join it up with two more songs so it's an awful lot of chapters but I think it all makes sense if you put it together it's a, a west coast and Californian experience
professional photography Kindly stick to the path
a couple of days out of an adjacent room and then went on her way and life went on.
didn't have tuppence for the phone I lived in one unheated room that I didn't quite call home And I didn't call home in about six months I said, hey, it's me, your prodigal son I swear one day I'm gonna make you proud I said I'd make you proud just to hear it said out loud But I didn't care Forty years ago I didn't know anything much back then About the ways of this world The wickedness of men The wickedness of men Yes, I was one And I'd swear most days I'd never do that again I'd never do that again I'd never do that again I'd do it again Sometimes I think about the times Useless times I spent just wishing Wishing time away Wishing time away
inside this color stone they say bum bum Thank you for listening, thank you for star I'd like to thank Amy and I'd like to thank Brett and uh, yeah, thank you. You better put a record on, you know, put a record on and then everyone can, you know, be careful of whatever it is you're doing on a Sunday night here. Thank you and good night. Thank you.